So today we're going to take a little bit of a departure from the uh, behind the scenes Saturdays videos that I normally do about uh, scam baiting or virtual machines. And we're going to look at caller ID spoofing and how that works because I see that question asked a lot. Uh, and, and I'm going to try to keep it as simple and as plain English as possible because the telephony systems around the world are old and antiquated and, um, you know, you could spend a lifetime trying to understand, you know, the public switch telephone network, the PSTN, uh, DID, direct inward dialing, all these different phrases and terminology that the telephony industry uses. So I'm going to try to, I'm really going to try to make this simple. Uh, the first thing you have to understand is that the responsibility of caller ID and determining who is calling, the actual number that is calling, actually lies on the person who initiated the call, not the person that's receiving it. So uh, in most cases, what you'll see is the person making the call sends their caller ID, their phone number, which the receiving person on their phone, it will show the phone number, and then depending on the phone system that they have, their phone system might do additional lookups to try to find out a, a name or a business name attached to that phone number or just the city and state associated with that phone number. But the actual phone number that's passed from caller to receiver is the responsibility of the caller, which obviously makes it very easy to spoof if you know what you're doing. <clears throat> now, in the traditional POTS or plain old telephone system, uh, that information is passed using frequency shift keying during usually the first and second rings of a call. So when that first ring begins, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fire off a, a whole bunch of information about that call, including the caller ID of the person that's calling to the recipient's telephone system. And that's where the caller ID phone number is derived from. When you have a, your personal home phone or you have uh, a cell phone, that... Uh, injection of information into the phone call for, via FSK is done by your telephone carrier. That's not your concern. That just happens automatically. But when you start looking at business phone systems or VoIP phone systems, uh, what you have to understand is that businesses or, or VoIP systems are given access to the PRI or primary rate interface for the telephony network. And in that case, instead of the, the call carrier doing things like passing in that additional information like caller ID, that all falls on the responsibility of the PBX or private branch exchange, basically the phone system of the person that is making the outbound call. Now, there's a good reason for this, uh, and there's legitimate reasons for this, and I'll give you a couple examples of those. Um, one thing that's very common in VoIP systems is what we call direct inward dialing, or DID, and that is basically assigning every single VoIP phone its own legitimate phone number, right? So um, our office number might be 1-800-555-1234, but, but if you were to dial, you know, 555-659-1286, uh, it's going to ring my extension directly, depending on how the PBX is set up. So we assign every single person in the company their own phone number for direct and we're dialing. When, you, when they make a call, when you're going to make, let's say, a sales call, uh, you don't want your personal DID number to be the one that's displayed on the caller's end. You would want it to be the company number, right? So we're going to pass along the company's number and say that is our caller ID. Another good example of this is call centers. So you have a an office in Florida and an office in California. The California system has the, the phone number, you know, 1-800-123-4567. Uh, and your Florida call center has another number that reaches that destination, but the public number that's available that you tell the general public, this is our phone number, is the one that's associated with California. So when you make calls out of your Florida office, you're going to spoof in the, the California number that all of your clients know and that your advertising has on it, so it's recognizable. Traditionally, this was limited to uh, only large companies that had access to the PRI from the traditional providers like AT&T or those guys and had the internal PBX that could handle something like that. But with the advent of VoIP, vo uh, voice over IP, any Joe Blow can go out there and get access to the PRI very, very cheaply through a VoIP provider and run a free and open source PBX system like Asterix and do all of this in-house. It takes... Uh, you know, depending on your skill level, a couple hours to set up and 20 bucks. It's very easy to do. And you don't even have to have a desk phone to do it with the with the technology of soft phones, which is basically a, f a phone that runs on your computer, a software phone. 
Uh, and so that's what you see these scammers use is uh, a cheap VoIP system. Uh, you know, sometimes they may be tied into desk phones or they may be using a soft phone with a headset and, uh, and a PBX that can handle this for them. And then they can spoof any number that they want. So with all of that being said, let's take a very quick look at how this technology works. And I'm going to give you an example using VoIP MS, which is my VoIP provider that I own several DIDs through and Xlight, which is a, a, an absolutely fantastic soft phone that uh, I think pretty much most scam baiters are using at this point. So let's dive into that and see exactly how that works. So I already have an account set up at VoIP MS, but it's very easy to set up. You sign up with your name, your number, your ad or your uh, phone, your your name, your address. You deposit 25 bucks. They verify your account, make sure you're a real person, and there you go. Uh, and one thing that's really neat about VoIP.MS is that they run t some of the PBX type stuff in your background in the background for you. You don't really have to run asterisks, and I personally don't. I let them handle uh, my voicemail and things like that. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to head to main menu, account settings, general, and uh, we'll set our caller ID number here as like 555-8675309. If anybody gets the reference, drop a comment below. Apply that. And then something I do is I also go up in my soft phone in my account settings and I set my display name to 555-8675309. And basically what that does is once it re-enables up here, it'll just show it up here. So when I'm calling someone, if I am using a spoof number, um, it's right up there. It's handy for me to know about. So I'm going to go ahead and give my uh, girlfriend's cell phone a call and see how this looks. And that's really all it takes to spoof a caller ID with current VoIP technologies. So I hope this little background on telephony systems and caller ID was helpful to you. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, be sure to slam that big red subscribe button down below to be the first to know when new videos come out. And if you do so feel like it, throw me a follow on Twitter at twitter.com slash each and every YT. We will see you on Tuesday with some more scam baiting.